Timetable Simulation. In this section, we will talk about how to simulate the timetable recreated in Timetables Part 2. This is an important step, especially for new root timetables, as it runs through the timetable in a non-GUI version of the editor, making sure that everything works. You will find yourself using this batch file extensively as you create, test, and refine your timetables, both for a root and for a scenario. Our first step is to navigate where we've installed the editor. In my case, this is D Drive, Program Files, Epic Games, Chainsaw World 4 Mod. In this base folder, we right click in any open space and select New, then Text Document. This gives us a new text docu uh, document.txt file. We need to rename this file to simtt.bat. As you can see, I already have a simtt.bat file, so I delete this new text file and open that with a text editor. To note, on Windows 11, you will need to open the file from your text editor rather than by right clicking it and selecting any of the options. I'll now load this file and show you the contents. The first section of this file should read the destination of your public editor executable, executable file. In my case, this is D Drive, Program Files, Epic Games, Train Sim World 4 Mod, TS2 Prototype, Binaries, Win64, Train Sim World Public Editor.exe. This entire section is contained within quotation marks. I will highlight this section now. The second step is to plug in the information the non-GUI editor needs to process. In our case, this is TS2 prototype, notice the space before and after this. Then it's run equal, dash run equals simulate timetable, another space. Timetable equals demonstration gameplay scenarios, demo 01, demo 01 timetable. It is imperative that this section is filled out correctly or the non-GUI editor will fail to run the timetable. We can now save and close the batch file before running it. To run the file, just double click the simtt.bat file located in the base editor folder, Train Sim World 4 mod. It may take a while for the simulation to start, so be patient. If the simulator fails to run, it means you've not set the command line prompt correctly, so you need to check the batch file. Usually this boils down to misspelled words or misplaced capital letters. And here we go, it's now running. And like I said, this takes a while. And there we go, it's starting to do its sort of run through of it. And there we go, it's working through the scenario. And it took 50 seconds seconds to 57 seconds to run it. This will close, and you'll get an Unreal Processor's crash message. Click close without sending as Unreal are not interested in what we're sending in because it, it doesn't make much sense to them. So we just close this without sending. And that ends this section, but there is another section. And we'll come back to that in a moment. In our timetable we created in the last tutorial, we want to go to our timetable defaults. Here. At the bottom of this section, we can see that the initial state section has become populated with a master data track file. 
This file is used extensively by route timetables to help with jumping into various trains that are within the timetable from the UI. For scenarios, we do not need this file, so we click on the yellow reset to default icon to clear the data track, this one here. Once this is done, compile and save the timetable. This concludes the section on simulating the timetable.